Welcome to the Salem Chamber Podcast. If it affects your business or this community, we'll be talking about it. Awesome. We are thankful to have Congressman Kurt Schrader with us today to talk about a lot of stuff going on, especially back in D.C. And uh, well, thank you, thank you for being here today and, and letting us uh, interview for our podcast. I oh, appreciate it, Zach. Thanks for the opportunity. Good way to connect with folks and hear from their congressman about his impressions of what's going on. Absolutely. I mean, there is a whole lot going on. So uh, we'll start off with a, kind of a little easy one. Uh, what are what are some of uh, the biggest wins, things you're most proud of for, for what you've done in the 13 years you've been, been congressman for Congressional oh, District 5? Well, we've had, quite frankly, quite a few. We've yeah. been very busy over the years, as you know, uh, getting some infrastructure down in Mill Creek, uh, uh, Industrial Park, led mm-hmm. to Amazon, a bunch of other big things coming this way. We're working on the Aurora Donald Interchange right now, mm-hmm. just up the road here. That's a big deal. We had the NOAA fleet come to a little town of Newport yeah. on the Oregon coast. That was uh, part and parcel of uh, our work. Felt really, really good about that uh, at the end of the day. And right now, uh, trying to work hard to uh, rebuild some of the uh, uh, police radio infrastructure here mm-hmm. in Marion County. Uh, having, uh, I think, some big successes along those lines. Trying to get a nursing school going out here on the Oregon coast. That looks like that might actually be going at Tillamook County. So, uh, you know, and then, you know, there's other, you know, pieces. Uh, Hopefully this infrastructure bill that, Mm -hmm. you know, is front and center these days. That's going to be another big win. Uh, I think, uh, in my opinion, that... uh, uh, I think the Affordable Care Act on balance is pretty darn good and giving millions of people access to health care we didn't mm-hmm. have before. And I like the fact that it's based on what you can afford. Mm-hmm. It's not just free. It's not so expensive. Uh, there are some people still left out. We're trying to fix mm-hmm. that. But that was, uh, I think, a, a real big one. And the farm bill, that was a, a big thing for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was on the Ag Committee back in the day, 2014. and. We, uh, we worked really hard, not only to help agriculture, but forestry. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, and historically, that had been left out, mm-hmm. I think, of uh, the farm bill. It's a big part of our uh, economy here in Oregon and in the mid, uh, uh, Mid-Valley. And then a small but very significant, in my opinion, the sea lion bill. We actually have okay. a problem, as you know, in the Willamette River and in the Columbia River where the sea lions are eating all the salmon we're trying to mm-hmm. restore and get back here. And so we were able to work with uh, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and uh, come up with a piece of legislation. Worked with uh, Jimmy Herrera Butler, good friend, uh, Republican colleague from Washington State, shares the Columbia River with us, and get that passed to where you know the salmon runs uh, are, while they're not great yet, at least mm-hmm. they're starting to get better, and we keep the sea lions from eating uh, them as they come back. So I get, now there's a bunch more, yeah. but those are, I think, some highlights. That's awesome. Anyway. Yeah, you, I mean, I, I have to applaud you. You were one of few uh, congressmen, I would say, or congresswomen, uh, too, that, you know, you can actually reach across the aisle and work with your colleagues on the other side. And you're a part of a number of different caucuses, two yep. of them being the, the Blue Dog Coalition right. and the, uh, it's uh, the New Democrat. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the, now the Problem Solvers Caucus. Oh, okay. uh, to your exact point, as Blue Dog, uh, it's a group of moderate Democrats. Mm-hmm. Uh, so is the New Dems to some degree. And we try and pride ourselves in being practical, a little fiscally responsible, trying to work across the aisle, uh, pro-business as well as pro-labor, those types of things. And then, But even with that, it, it became apparent to me when I was started in Congress, what, 12 years ago, there was not much communication across the aisle. Mm-hmm. So I started this Problem Solvers Caucus with a Republican friend of mine from Wisconsin, also pretty new, and uh, the goal was to sit down break bread together mm-hmm. and talk about issues and listen to how the other person from their geography and their mm-hmm. party talked about it differently maybe than I did mm-hmm. coming from the valley and the central Oregon coast. And uh, uh, fast forward to now, uh, we're now 29 strong Democrats, 29 strong Republicans. Uh, we talk all the time. We've had some great wins. Uh, this infrastructure package that is on the cusp of being approved and signed by the President mm-hmm. of the United States is largely a result of our work. When the President was having trouble negotiating with the Republicans in the Senate, uh, it was all falling apart. Well, my Problem Solvers Caucus uh, had a package that we had put, put together that met both Democrat and Republican needs and the diversity mm-hmm. geographically of our country. 
and put it together and the Senate picked it up and a group of bipartisan senators went on with it. The president got excited, yep. he got engaged and uh, it passed the Senate overwhelmingly bipartisan vote. I think it was like 69 to, well, whatever the math is, 31 yeah, or yeah, something yeah. there. It, it, and then uh, it's come to the House uh, there were some attempts to kind of hold it up, and we pushed that through, you know, we, we stopped that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully next month we'll be able to pass that in the House and yeah, has get people back to work. Has a deadline? Is it uh, September 27th? September or like 27th. That? The Speaker was going to keep it kind of open. She tried to tie it to another very partisan bill, this yep. reconciliation mm -hmm. thing, which uh, I'm not a huge fan of, to be honest with you, Zach. But, uh, you know, why, why cloud a nice bipartisan mm -hmm. win mm -hmm. with something that is very partisan? That makes no sense to me. I mean, you know, people right now with COVID, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. all this, they, they want to see us working together. Absolutely. They want to see a win. So uh, my group, there's a group of nine of us that basically on the Democrat side told the speaker, hey, you know, you got to do what you got to do, but we're not voting for this combination thing. Mm -hmm. If you want to move forward in anything, you got to separate this out. Let that infrastructure bill go through on its own mm -hmm. merits, because uh, it is very bipartisan. And uh, we were able to convince her that was the right course. And so hopefully September 27th, that'll uh, happen. Yep, <laughs> it's going to be exciting to see. And looking over the reconciliation bill, it's been a very interesting thing to kind of see develop uh, through over the past few months of you know, are we going to get? Are we only going to get one if we get the other? And right. so it's it's been interesting to see. Well, uh, shifting gears a little bit, kind of somewhat in the same kind of conversation. Could you provide our listeners on some insight of what DC is like when there's a new administration that comes in? Is there, you know, whether it's an individual or a different party, or does sure. things kind of change? Uh, they do, uh, and I'd say even without a change in administration, every Congress is different. Mm -hmm. I think that's. I think my colleagues here in Salem at the state legislature yeah. would say that too. They, every Congress has its own flavor. A lot depends on the issues of the day. Uh, a lot depends on the leadership and mm -hmm. how they're working together or not. Um, and some of the, and some of the uh, issues take a long time to mature. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm on a really good committee, I think, uh, called Energy and Commerce. Mm -hmm. It really deals with Energy, commerce, environment, business, uh, uh, telecommunications, mm -hmm. energy, um, you know, consumer affairs, a whole bunch, 75% yeah. of the bills of Congress go through this. And I like it because it is a bipartisan committee. Mm -hmm. uh, both uh, the, the top Democrat and the top Republican make a real point of pushing legislation forward that we agree on. Yeah. And it is shocking. I know most folks out there don't don't believe it, but you know we agree probably on eighty percent of the mm -hmm. stuff that's out there, maybe more, mm -hmm. uh, with differences on how you approach it, maybe. But uh, and so it, it's fun to work uh, on stuff in in that vein where you can really, you know, make a difference mm -hmm. uh, on people's daily lives. And it takes a while to get stuff through. We worked on a. Uh, several pieces of legislation. One big one was getting doctors paid to take care of Medicare. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks don't realize that uh, Medicare does not pay commercial rates. It's a, so it's it's a, a loss on a lot of medical providers' books. And uh, doctors were afraid of taking too many seniors because mm -hmm. they couldn't balance their own books. They're, they're mm -hmm. small businesses for, for a lot of them. And uh, so we fixed that. Uh, it's been a problem for 10, 15 years. And uh, we got the speaker's attention, and the, uh, both sides of the aisle agreed and came up with. But that took like ten years. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, and that's one of the things is like a lot of the things that eventually do come out have been in the system for such a long time and being changed and whatnot. And I think it kind of goes to your point too with the different Congress coming in. You can you yeah. know kind of you can change that dynamic and the you different can. issues and stuff. You can, and it, it helps get stuff done across the aisle. There's a big change over in staff that sometimes mm -hmm. can be good and it can be bad. You mm -hmm. know, you need some institutional memory so that yep. when these long-standing issues come up, you don't have to retrain mm -hmm. everyone how to talk about it, what's going on. So that's going to be a, a bit of an issue. And and I'm, I'm a confirmed Congress person. I mean, it, people get confused. I think the President of the United States runs the show. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it works yeah, yeah, yeah. in this country. Yeah. That might be true in some dictatorship or authoritarian regime yeah. or, or maybe even a parliamentary system, you know, mm -hmm. like in England or France or Germany. But in America, it is Congress, yeah. good or bad, that makes the ultimate decisions. You know, the president, no matter what party or who it is, gets to propose stuff. Mm -hmm. And then Congress says, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. President, but here's the way we'd like to do mm -hmm. it. Because we represent these districts from all over the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
uh, I, I think that's an important point. You Absolutely. Know? So even though you get a change in administration, there's a different flavor, Congress gets to set the rules. And I'm, I'm not a big one on executive orders. I don't mm-hmm. care who's doing it because mm-hmm. that's one person, mm-hmm. admittedly, elected by the American people, so there's a lot of influence. But uh, it's better to stand the test of time if we can actually pass legislation mm-hmm. on uh, climate issues, health care, pick your, your area of mm-hmm. interest. But if we can do that, put it in statute, that, that helps give businesses and families some more certainty Absolutely. about the future so they can make the right investments, they can make mm-hmm. the right decisions about their family. So, Well, in a lot of times, too, obviously with Congress, is you have this, you know, this Petri dish, uh, for lack of a better term, of you know, Congress people that represent different areas and like the interests of one are going to be different than the interests oh, of totally. another. So I, and it's not always party related. Yeah. I mean, a lot of yeah. it's just geography. When I worked on yeah. the Farm Bill, uh, you know, it was uh, uh, Democrats and Republicans from specialty crop states mm-hmm. kind of against, in a nice way, uh, the folks from the, the big commodity yeah. states where it's just all corn, soy, wheat, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. And so your, your, your alliances vary depending on mm-hmm. the issue. And uh, uh, I think that more than your party orientation. Although we've gotten way too much party only, yep. in my yep. opinion, these days. Uh, and that's not the way our forefathers set this Absolutely system up. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, looking into the last quarter of 2021, uh, what are some things that you're most excited about? <laughs> or in, and conversely, what do you foresee as some things kind of keeping you up at night? Well, wildfires keep me up mm-hmm. at night. Um, you know, after the horrible... A uh, year last year, uh, I talked to everyone in the district. Obviously, my districts have sent mm-hmm. you know, Willamette Valley, Clackamas, Marion, Polk counties, and then also the Central Oregon Coast, Tillamook mm-hmm. and Lincoln counties. And we had fires everywhere, man. Yep. We had fires in the valley, we had at the coast. And so, with this extreme drought we've had this year, we're very, very, very concerned about mm-hmm. that. It, Keeps me up. Uh, uh, John and I, uh, one of my top teammates, work very closely with the National Forest Service, with NOAA, trying to track what's going on, uh, stay abreast of the latest developments in fires and or firefighting mm-hmm. issues and techniques, Try and work closely with our state partners and local partners in that area. So that's a big, big issue, and that will continue, obviously, through the end of this year, uh, trying to make sure that uh, we're on top of, of that. The COVID issue obviously is a big deal. That that has a huge impact on uh, businesses' ability to operate, mm-hmm. businesses' ability to provide jobs mm-hmm. for people, and trying to find the right balance between supporting families but not making it so that they don't want to go back to mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's opportunities out there for them get kids back in school, but do it safely. Mm-hmm. So th- those are, are probably two of the, the, the biggest issues. And then for me, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, just trying to get this infrastructure bill across the finish line and, and, and frankly curb some of the, the, the enthusiasms of my colleagues. Uh, as you're aware, the national debt has grown dramatically. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd argue that uh, while it increased dramatically, while we put money out to help you know, fight COVID mm-hmm. and support businesses and hospital systems and families, that uh, it's time to ratchet that back a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's not free money. It just doesn't fall from the mm-hmm. skies. And I don't want uh, your generation to have to uh, pay for all that uh, uh, on my credit card. So uh, <laughs> we're trying to balance that. And that'll be a big part of, I think, my work over the next uh, next year or so to okay. you know, make sure we balance things out in a smart, thoughtful, fiscally responsible Well, way. thanks for keeping us, uh, you know, future future adults in, in mind <laughs> on that. It's one thing we definitely, uh, amongst my friends, we talk about a lot. So. Oh, interesting. Um, and over, so uh, switching gears a little bit again, over the last two weeks, the news has been dominated by essentially one tom- topic, and that's Afghanistan. Yes. Could you provide a little information from a congressional point of view, like sure. what you guys are seeing and, and whatnot? Well, very concerned, and uh, I think the focus, the focus right now is getting people out, mm-hmm. getting American citizens, uh, a lot of our Afghan allies that helped us, mm-hmm. uh, concerned about women and children, given the regime that is uh, potentially taking over, trying to get them out, uh, create as multiple, uh, as many multiple avenues to get out as possible, uh, get them to the United States, uh, try and minimize the stopovers in various countries, let's get this done correctly. Uh, let's fulfill our obligations to to these people. It it's very disconcerting uh, to see uh, 
uh, you know, what's happening there. Uh, really worry about uh, the country. Uh, a lot of servicemen and women mm -hmm. gave their all to give these people an opportunity, but it is up to them to mm -hmm. take that opportunity. And uh, their military obviously doesn't have the same fighting spirit that Americans do. Mm -hmm. uh, the intelligence we received uh, regarding the Taliban was obviously very flawed. I'm mm -hmm. very upset and concerned about that. Uh, a lot of folks uh, like myself have attended classified briefings and trying to get at, you know, how could this transpire in such a chaotic, horrible way? And so quickly. That, and so quickly. How could you not know that military? How, what was the flaw in the intelligence you had or the assumptions you made? Um, you know, and uh, well, hopefully we'll get some answers here over the next few weeks. But the focus right now, obviously, is get as many people out. The uh, president made a very strong statement uh, about going after those folks who blew mm -hmm. up the gates, killed those servicemen and women. Our, you know, our hearts go out to those families, especially here as we're just ending the conflict mm -hmm. uh, on our part. And, uh, you know, it's, but uh, rest assured, uh, every member of Congress, again, no matter who you are, what party, what part of the country mm -hmm. you're from, uh, go after that ISIS group that uh, that did that sort of thing. And we're going to have to fight. We're going to be fighting that that war for a long time to come. Absolutely, long, long absolutely. Time. Yeah, definitely, definitely troubling and just so so interesting to see from perspective here and watching everything unfold. It's yeah. it's it's horrible. Well, here's the hardest question. You ready for this one? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so so when Congressman Schrader is back in district, where does he like to eat most? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I usually pick a burger place. I'm a big uh, uh, Carl's Jr. Burgerville okay. type guy. Uh, no, uh, believe it or not, I don't eat too many hamburgers. I'm at the cafeteria. It's not that exotic yeah. in Washington, D.C. <laughs> so I'm usually at the cafeteria and try to eat uh, sort of a balanced meal, give my chaotic lifestyle. So it's nice to come back home and just kick back with uh, uh, hamburger and the best meal I get here in Oregon, though, mm -hmm. is for my sons when I eat at home because he's a great cook. There we go. <laughs> Love to hear that. Love to hear that. Well, thank you again so much for, for providing some information to our listeners. This is going to be something that I'm sure a lot of our members and people that even aren't our members just in the community that are going to tune in to listen to. So thank okay. you so much. Good. Thanks for the opportunity, Zach. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely.